What true, non-paranormal story gives you a chills? A few years ago in Saratoga NY there was a guy who would break into people's houses just to watch them sleep. Never took anything. Just watched people sleep. They caught him. But it apparently really messed with the minds of the victims. Saratoga sleeper creeper. That is why I sleep with a pillow under my knife. Edit. Slimabo is proud of me. A guy was sleeping on top of fridges at a grocery store trying to hide from work. He fell between the wall and one. And died there. Nobody knew where he was until his rotting body stunk up the place. His body actually wasn't found for over 10 years. Alive. Bunch of kids survived a plane crash but couldn't get out of the mountains. Wound up cannibalizing each other. A few were eventually rescued. Their stories are harrowing. The fact that some of them survived is amazing they were in a freaking plane crash and after surviving that they were deep into the Andes for several months unbelievably they made it out themselves by climbing a mountain without gear rather than being spotted by a helicopter or whatever. There was even an avalanche. Zeus really had it out for those poor freaks. Seeing that photo of the guy hiding in the trees. The kid took a selfie on a mountain trail and sent the pic to his family then went missing. After closer inspection they noticed there was a guy crouching down hiding in the trees behind where the kid was. On this trail that no one was supposed to be on. Holy shoot. HTTPS colon slash slash. En. Wikipedia. Org wiki kidnapping of JC Duggard a paroled rapist and his wife abducted an 11 year old girl and raped her on a weekly basis. Even forcing her to give birth to two children. All throughout this time he was being monitored by parole officers and psychiatrists who praised him for his supposed rehabilitation and even tried to have him taken off parole several times. Unaware that he was holding three people captive under their noses. This went on for 18 years until he was finally caught when he brought his daughters by rape to a campus and the police officers reported it to his parole officer. Him all for rehabilitation but not for murder and rape. The hint of KFEC murders. Six people were killed on a farmstead in Germany in 1922. The killer lived with the corpses for three days. It was never solved. Might have just been a random drifter looking for shelter from the snow. The creepiest part is that their maid had quit six months prior. Citing strange sounds in the attic as one of the reasons. She thought it was haunted. Then the homeowner found a newspaper in their house that no one had bought. And that no one in the area subscribed to. Finally. Days before the murder. He tells a neighbor he saw footprints in the snow leading from the forest to his house, but not going out again. It was later found that the little girl was probably alive for a while while piled in the dead bodies of her family. It'd say the story of the guy who died in nutty putty caves. He got stuck upside down in a small crevice and rescuers couldn't free him. He died from cardiac arrest after 27 or so hours. Him never going spelunking after reading about it. His body is still there. They couldn't get it out so they left it and filled the cave with concrete. Didn't they manage to dislodge him and as they were pulling him out the harness failed and he got lodged again? There's an older Swedish murder case where a husband murdered his wife by essentially boiling her alive in their sauna. Had clearly been planning the act for a while and showed little remorse when confronted. It's just an incredibly disturbing case. The Delphi murders. Two girls killed in broad daylight. On a public hiking trail. Perp's body and voices captured on video by the victim. And no arrests. No tips have led to anything. It's not supposed to be that easy to get away with a double murder. Someone somewhere knows this guy. That French guy Terra who most likely ate a whole baby. Uh, when my sister was 9 or 10. She was walking home when she encountered an older teenage paper boy. She said he knocked her down. Threw his bag over her head and wouldn't let her up. She fought like hell but felt like she was suffocating. She finally broke away and ran home. WTF. It was so unexpected and bizarre. She never told anybody and she never saw him again. That was probably back in 1977 and I only learned of it recently. Nothing fancy. But makes you wonder what the frick was wrong with this kid and what his motive was. This surprises me a lot less than it should. The story of the finding of the German tourists in Death Valley. The discoverer was able to provide the meat of the story of their attempts to reach safety whilst also discussing his own issues with the remoteness of the terrain. It's two stories in one and both are compelling and dangerous. It is both fascinating and scary at moments. Tom Mahood. Authorhand. Og. The blog entries for the search for Bill Uasco are also interesting. Sad but interesting. Sylvia Likens. No contest. 
I love true crime and I've read a lot of fricked up shoot, real and or fictional. But man, I never want to read that shoot again. It is goddamn harrowing. The first time I read it I couldn't get it out of my head for a week or two straight. Here is the story. Be warned. It's very distressing. It's how my dad was nearly going to be kidnapped by terrorists. He is a doc and they needed a doc. He responded with equals I'm just a school doc. I don't know how to heal on equals. Sorry for bad English. And I'm Algerian and that happened before 2008 and I'm born in 2008 so if they talk him I will not be here writing this comment. It'll help you with your English mate. It's how my dad was nearly going to be kidnapped by terrorists. Our top floor neighbor's little daughter fell from their living room window. We live on the third floor. But because of the slope, the living room facade is on a fifth floor height. Making the height that she fell around 18 meters. When the incident took place, my father was chilling in our living room couch. With his earbuds on, he recognized some things were falling down from the top. However he assumed that it was just some birds diving in. Turns out, while her dad was working in the kitchen, the asleep child woke up and found the open window. She threw her toys first, and then herself. She was just 3, 5 years old back then. Not the age for a child to understand the gravity. No one realized she fell until her twin brother woke up, couldn't find her and started crying. I cannot imagine how the father felt when he saw the little girl lying down there. Nothing paranormal, just tragedy. However, knowing that no one noticed the incident took place and left her lying there for about 10-15 minutes gives me chills. My dad installed some blocks on our windows so that they could only be open a few centimeters for this reason. It's awful that you can leave your child alone for a few minutes and they are gone. The torture and murder of Junko Furuta.